I just updated my DJI system to the latest firmware that released yesterday, and I am thrilled to tell you about the new things in it. There are some things about DJI that a firmware update will never fix, like the fact that some of you guys are afraid that they're coming in to wipe us all out, knock everybody off the table, take over, and force us to buy DJI forevermore. But I feel like the things they did in this firmware update actually... I mean, maybe they're just playing a long game and they're trying to trick us <laughs> in the short term, but you're going to learn something today. So here's what DJI put in this firmware update. And yes, I am going to show you this stuff, but they fixed the analog latency issue, you know, the analog input that lets you use the DJI goggles as your analog goggles, but there was all kinds of latency issues. Thank you to RC Shim, who did latency testing and sort of proved what some of the issues were. They supposedly fixed that. Well, I'm going to test it and I'm going to tell you what I think in this video. And the fact that you can't see all your important Betaflight OSD elements, they have totally fixed that. Well, 99%. So here I am, in my Betaflight OSD tab, and that might surprise you because this quadcopter is my Rotoriot HD1. It doesn't have an analog camera on it, so what good is the OSD? <laughs> yes, if you like your camera view to be cluttered with a whole bunch of garbage, now you can do that with DJI too. Here are the OSD elements that DJI supports. I've gone through the whole list and I've turned them all on and I'm going to scroll through the list so you can check right now. I'm not going to read them off. You can check right now in this list and see which ones they do and don't support. And the coolest thing is that it actually is just read. I still do the layout. Check it out. Like I'm going to move this one. Huh? You still do the layout. In the OSD tab, just like you always did, the goggle is reading the layout from the freaking, I don't know how it's doing it. That's pretty freaking cool. Now, this is not perfect. This still has a little bit of a ways to go. For example, I am annoyed that the warning element doesn't work. That's kind of an important one. DJI, please, in the next firmware update, that would be a great one to have. The warning element is so important for troubleshooting issues like when Betaflight won't arm or when you have like a, you know, your quadcopter just tanks into the ground and you don't know why. You got to have the warning element. I'm bummed that they didn't put that one in. They did put in the ESC temperature, which is, as we all know, super important, but not the Betaflight warning element. So I'm not sure what's going on. In order to make this work, you're going to go into your DJI menu. You're going to go to settings, display, and you're going to enable custom OSD, and that'll make this work. The other big thing that's in this firmware update relates to the using the goggles with their analog input. Now, as you saw earlier in the video, I've done the modification to mine to mount a rapid fire directly in the goggles. And I've got a video about how to do that if you are brave enough or dumb enough to follow along. It does make for a really nice all-in-one kit. However, if you don't want to do that, there is a company that makes a clip-on receiver module. That's kind of cool. It just plugs right into the AV input. Regardless of how you're doing it, if you've got an AV input, you haven't been too impressed with the performance in the past. The latency on the AV input is, at best, not as good as you would want it to be, and at worst, really bad, and it's variable. And the DVR doesn't record the AV input, so if you like DVR, you are out of luck. DJI has fixed both of those things in this one. Uh, they have improved the latency, so it's consistent and faster. And we're going to go outside and confirm that with a flight. And they've made it so you can record DVR. <laughs> you can record DVR with the goggles. And it's like 20 megabit per 40 megabit. I don't remember. H264, 68 side. It's a really good DVR. Here are some sample footage of the DVR. We'll take a look at that as well. And the first thing you're going to notice here is that the DJI DVR is hopping up and down. Look at the OSD text. That is probably due to the deinterlacing algorithm that they're using or not deinterlacing. I don't know. Uh, but that is definitely something you don't see in the other two. Uh, the DJI is at 60 frames per second. The Orca is at 30 frames per second. And we have to acknowledge that Orca has a firmware update out that upgrades their DVR to 30 frames per, or 60 frames per second. I just haven't installed it yet and I'm wanting to get this video out ASAP. So Orca should be at 60 FPS even though it isn't. 
Okay, um, I'm going to let you guys just take a look at this and decide for yourself, well, you know, what you think of the quality and whether you think what you're seeing here would be acceptable to you. Another thing that I'm noticing as I watch this in playback during the edit is that the Fat Shark DVR is falling behind. The Fat Shark DVR is dropping frames, and this is significant because the DJI DVR is actually being fed from the analog output of the Fat Shark HD02. I am not using the rapid fire goggle with the internal mod. So the Fat Shark HD02 DVR should be recording exactly the same thing. They're both getting exactly the same signal. If anything, the DJI signal is slightly weaker, perhaps because it's coming for, through the AV output of the HD02s. Um, meanwhile, the Orca is staying pr pretty much synced up, and is even though it is n using its own, the Orca has its own rapid fire. It's not. It's. It, uh, so really, I have no idea why the HDO2 DVR is going out of sync here. Uh, and yes, this is the latest firmware. This is the Fat Shark HDO2 with the updated firmware. So I don't know what the deal is there, but hmm, there you go. Uh, oh yeah, what about the latency? I was so concerned with getting the DVRs all running and getting this whole thing going, the whole flight, I completely forgot I was supposed to be paying attention to latency, which is kind of a good thing because it means I didn't even notice the latency. And RC Shim has rerun his test and he found the latency on the AV input to be about 20 milliseconds. Okay, just a couple more things before we close out. For those of you who did the 1200 milliwatt mod and are wondering if it is still working, I still have 1200 milliwatts as an option in my goggles. Didn't even have to redo the uh, SD card or anything like that. I have heard from other people who said after they flashed it, they lost the option, but then they were able to restore it. It seems like DJI did not lock that out, at least as far as I can tell. Other things that are in the release notes that are definitely worth mentioning even if, in my opinion, they're a little bit overshadowed by the things we've already talked about. The remote controller, if you have the DJI controller, you can now plug it in with USB and use it to play simulator. Again, something people asked for, and DJI just went, eh, sure, here it is. Fantastic. And they also added the ability to adjust frame rate and bit rate according to distance and channel bandwidth when the transmission distance is more than one kilometer. And... That sounds cool because one of the things that analog still kind of has over DJI is that when you start pushing range, analog has a little bit more sort of control over how the signal degrades, whereas DJI kind of just does whatever it's going to do without as much ability to tweak. So it is kind of cool and seems like that would give more ability to push the quad out past one, two, three kilometers or more. But that's not something I have tested for this release, so I'm just going to mention that it's there and then leave that for other people and that that's it that brings us to the end of the video although i will say i've been scrolling through the release notes uh for previous releases that i didn't make as big a deal out of if you're still on like the very first version of firmware from when you activated there are so many new features that have been added you, you update to the latest there's a lot of convenience features and a lot of performance features that are definitely dji is just rocking it with these with these firmware updates one of the things that orca said that they that made them stand out was that they wanted to be future proof and upgradable and they had the processing power to add all kinds of functionality and i think dji is also demonstrating that exact same kind of thing there are definitely reasons why a lot of people are going to choose to go with a goggle like Orca or like the Fat Shark HDO over DJI. Reasons related not necessarily to performance, but maybe related to politics or culture or, well, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not here to argue that point to you, but I am here to say I'm pretty freaking impressed with what DJI has done here. And if there was a little bit of hesitation in my mind that they had bad intentions towards FPV as a hobby, well, so far... They haven't, they haven't turned the turn, you know, they haven't shown their evil side yet. And if they keep showing, yes, DJI, play the long game. If you're going to screw us over, take like three or four years to screw over FPV and just keep making your product better the whole time. <laughs> then by the time you screw us over and drive everybody else out of business, we won't care anymore because it'll just be so good. 
<laughs> All right. Happy flying, everybody. Thank you.